Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, you would not guess the amount of emails and questions I get as to what size of a generator or solar generator you should get. And I always tell people it really depends on what you're going to need it for, on what you intend on using it for. Now, what I think about getting a generator or solar generator for a grid down event be it a long-term or a short-term grid down event is that you should get something that's about one and a half times the size of what you need for your critical electronic infrastructure or electric infrastructure for example let's say that you need to have oops it fell over <laughs> I went ahead and put my uh, lentils next to it because it kept wanting to tip over and I want to give you a good picture of it. So as I was stating, for example, let's say that during a grid down event, you need to keep your refrigerator running, right? Let's say just for example, that your refrigerator uses 300 watts, right? Just making it up. I would say that if you were getting a generator just for the refrigerator, that you should get a generator that would produce at a minimum 450 watts of electricity my rule is and I didn't read this rule from anywhere it's just something that I go by my rule is is that I always want to have at least one and a half times the usage that I need just in case you have appliances like a refrigerator that surges in power a little bit during startup so I always go by one and a half times what I need so when you go around your house and you figure out how many appliances you have that you need during a power outage then you can go around and find out how much each of those appliances use in wattage and the, that's the problem that I run into a lot of people don't know where to find the wattage usage of the appliance and or when they do find it they find it in amps and they do not understand or know how to convert amps into watts so I went ahead and purchased one of these power meters and all it does is it's very simple. It's plug and play. And I think it was either like $19.99 or $26.99, something like that. But it's less than $30 at Amazon. And I will put it on my Amazon storefront for those of you that want to find this same one that I'm using. These devices are very simple. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a couple of very simple examples that way you can have a better understanding if you decide to get one of these as to what size of a solar generator or a regular uh, gasoline slash LP uh, dual fuel generator you would need in order to be prepared for a power outage all right so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and take this and you're just going to go ahead and plug it into your outlet as you can see I've got it plugged into an extension cord that extension cord is plugged into my outlet here in the bunker and all you're gonna do is plug it into your outlet and then you're gonna plug in whatever appliance it is that you want to know how much the wattage is so for example right now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my little vacuum cleaner that I have for the bunker into here I'm gonna start it so that you can see that it records the wattage and what you're gonna do is, is you're going to go ahead and write down for example I'll write down on a piece of paper vacuum cleaner even though that's not a critical thing that I need, but it's just for an example, ladies and gentlemen. I'll write down vacuum cleaner, and then I'll sit there and start it, and I'll watch and see if I can catch what's the very highest wattage that was used by that vacuum cleaner. Right? And this, ladies and gentlemen, is my big vacuum cleaner that I have for the bunker. <laughs> As you can see, it's just a tiny little guy, but it doesn't have to be that big for 121 square feet. So anyways, let me go ahead and set this up. All I'm going to do is plug this in and then I'm going to start the vacuum cleaner and it should start working. Okay, let me go ahead and set this up. That way you can see perfectly how this works. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're back. So after we're done recording how many watts this took, I'll show you how to go through the functions and this device will tell you what the highest wattage that was used was and what the lowest wattage that was used was. Okay, so... As you can see here, I've got my power cord for my little vacuum here. Let me go ahead and plug it in. So now it's plugged in. As you can see, everything says 0.0. .0. And this also has a function where you, can, where you can program in what you pay per kilowatt hour in your area. And it will tell you how much it costs to run that appliance 
for that given amount of time that you had it plugged in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start the vacuum cleaner and I'm going to go ahead and lower the volume. That way I don't blow out your ears so that you can see how the wattage goes up and it should stabilize. And as you can see, it stabilized around 235 watts. However, you did see it go up to like, I think it was around 400 or so. And that high amount of wattage is really what I like to use when determining what size generator to get for whatever I'm going to use it for. So now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and plug in a small heater that I have in here. It's an electric heater that I have in here uh, until my propane heater gets installed, which should be getting installed today, by the way. So let's go ahead and plug in the heater and then we'll go ahead and take the number for the heater down. So I do believe, if I remember correctly, this one was probably maxed out at about 400 watts. All right, so we'll use that. I'd rather be on the safe side and go with a higher wattage than uh, try to pick it exactly right and then not, you know, and then not have the wattage that you really need when you need it. So let me go ahead and put this little vacuum back and then we're going to go ahead and hook up our heater and see what the heater draws. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this is the little heater that I have heating the bunker right now. And it's just, I think it's like a 900 or 1000 watt heater. I forget what it is, but it's actually more than plenty to keep the bunker warm at these temperatures. I'm not sure how it will do at like negative 30, negative 40. Uh, however, take a look at this. I do have my propane heater that is going to be installed today in that area right there. They're supposed to come here today to install it. and I'll show you that once it's installed and it's working. But as you can see here, the heater is drawing about 10 watts right now. And I have it plugged in. It's drawing about 10 watts because it's not throwing out any heat. Uh, what it does is it has a, a small fan in there that it uses to turn on every once in a while. I don't know why if it's to like keep the coils dry or something like that. But every once in a while that little fan will turn on, especially after... It stops heating that little fan will stay on for quite a while I think it's just to cool down and keep the coils dry but don't ask me I'm not an expert on on heaters and stuff like that so what I'm gonna do is as you can see right now the temperature in here is 67 degrees which is kind of warm for me but it's it's okay I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up to like 72 or something like that that way it'll make it turn on So I'm not sure if you could hear that, but it's turning on right now and it's running. So let's take a look and you see right now it's drawing 900 watts, 910, 909 watts. So it's around 910 watts. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take this number right here because right now it's on high. I'm going to take this number and multiply it times one and a half. So let's go to the blackboard and let's just use the two numbers that we came up with the roughly 400 watts for the vacuum cleaner for its startup and let's go with 910 watts for this heater right here because right now it's on high it does have a lower mode uh, that it changes to once it starts reaching its temperature so like once it gets to like 71 degrees in here about one degree uh, lower than what I have it set for it'll actually lower down and start lowering its wattage usage as it gets closer to the temperature that you want it to be all right so this is what you're going to do with your appliances all right so like I said let's go to the blackboard and let's go ahead and do a good example so this little tool right here as you can see it's very easy to use there's a lot of functions that you can use on this for example the little user manual on this is just one page very easy to follow anyone can follow these instructions and it shows you how to use, use each different function. It shows you how to calculate the amount of money you're using, depending on how much you pay for per kilowatt hour. It shows you how to display the voltage, the amps that you're using. It shows you how to get to the maximum wattage that was used during that session that you used it for. And for those of you that are here in the United States, as you can see here, this watt meter is rated for 1,800 watts or 15 amps. And for those of you that want to know how to turn amps into watts, it's very easy. You just multiply the number of amps by 120. So if you multiply 
15 amps by 120, you have 1800 amps. And 15 amps is your garden variety outlet in your house. Houses usually have 15 and 20 amp outlets, all right, depending on what you're using for it. Usually, if you have a 20 amp outlet somewhere, uh, you may be using that for like a medium size air conditioner or something like that. So let's do a little AP math, ladies and gentlemen. If you remember, the vacuum cleaner was running at a high of roughly 393 watts. So we're going to call that 400 watts. The heater ran at a high of about 910 watts. We're going to leave that just like that. For the total wattage of those two appliances coming out to 1,310 watts. Now, if we apply my rule to it of multiplying the wattage that you require by 1.5, it comes out to a total of 1,965 watts. So if I was purchasing a generator that I was going to use just to run these two appliances, I would purchase one that would allow me a continuous output of roughly 2,000 watts. That is the ideology that I use whenever I go ahead and decide what size generator, be it a household generator or just a small backup generator to get. Let's go ahead and do a real life example of some of the things that I always want to make sure that I can continue to run during a power outage. So here you can see that my refrigerator is a 25 cubic foot refrigerator. It normally runs around 190 watts or so, but when it starts up and it has a surge, it surges up to about 390 watts. So 400 watts for my refrigerator. Same thing for my freezer, 400 watts. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, at their low, for example, my refrigerator, when the, when the compressor is not running and the doors are closed and the lights are off, it's only drawing about 50, 60 watts. But at its high, it'll draw about 400 watts. Same thing with the freezer. Same thing with my Toyo heater. My Toyo heater only runs at about 60 watts when it's actually heating. However, during the startup, it uses a device that heats up really hot so that it can get that fuel burning. Once that happens, the only thing that it maintains is the fan and the uh, fuel pump. So it doesn't use a lot of wattage for that. But at its high, it's about 400 watts. A CPAP machine is about 100 watts or so. Uh, lighting throughout the house, I would say 100 watts, especially in this age where most lighting is LED. A computer, for example, my computer, my monitor here uses, when it's running and everything, uses around 90 watts per hour. And Wi-Fi, around 50 watts if you have a, a dedicated Wi-Fi for the house. So the total wattage for all of the things that I would want to keep running during a power outage that are important to me is roughly 1,550 watts. So once I multiply that 1550 by 1 1.5, I come up with about 2325 watts. So if I were looking for a generator to run my home during a power outage and run the things that are important to me, I would go ahead and find a generator that was at a minimum, I would say 2500 watts or more. You're not going to find a generator that's exactly 2325 watts. But the bigger, in my opinion, the better. Not only would you be able to run other things, like for example, with my house generator, which is I think 8,500 continuous watts, I could run my electric water heater that I have in my house because my electric water heater only consumes 1,500 watts. So I could actually run that if I wanted to. But at the very minimum, when you're taking a look around your house, uh, go ahead and compile a list that looks similar to this, all right, but with the things that are important to you you know, life-saving things that are important to you first, and then things that are placed there in order to be convenient to you. Like, for example, lighting or computer or Wi-Fi. Those things will not affect your life, whereas a heater would. Whereas I believe that in a long-term power outage, having a refrigerator that can get electricity could be life-saving depending on how much food you have in there and if you would rely on that food during a long-term outage where you couldn't get out of the house and go get food. So make sure that you take care of your life-saving things first and calculating the wattage that you need and then you'll have a, be a better idea as to 
what size generator or solar generator to get. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Now you know how to figure out what size generator or solar generator you would need in order to power your critical items during a power outage. With this little watt meter right here, you can just hook up everything that you know you're going to need, all of your critical infrastructures in your house, your heating, your cooling, your air conditioning, your lights, even entertainment, computer, CPAP machine. That way you can figure all of those things out, come up with a wattage. In my opinion, you should multiply it times one and a half. That way you know that your generator will be powerful enough to power all of those things at the same time at the height of their wattage usage. All right? Having said that, I truly do hope you got something out of this. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Lask Prepper. I am out. Start off September, which is National Preparedness Month, by stocking up on real food that will give you all of the nutrients that your body requires on a daily basis, and that's Nutrient Survival. Ladies and gentlemen, I purchased Nutrient Survival because it's the very best and most nutrient-dense long-term survival food on the market. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be telling you to stock up on it. And when I say this, I mean it. Feed your freedom with nutrient survival. You've got that too. So whether you're digging in or bugging out, you don't just survive an emergency situation, you thrive in it. Nutrient survival. Feed your freedom.